All right, class, welcome to our first math lesson. This is going to need, or you are going to need to have your book and a pencil. So if you don't have those, pause the video and go get them. Once you have your book, go ahead and turn to page one. All right, so at the bottom of your page here, it's going to ask you some questions. These are I can statements, so let's go over them together. The first one says, I can find the volume of a solid figure by counting unit cubes. We're going to mark all of our answers in the before column. So if you say yes to this, then you put an X. If you can't do that, just leave it blank. We're going to do this. We're going to check off the skills we know. As we complete each lesson, lesson, we're going to see how many more skills we can check off. So right now we're just checking off what we already know. I can find the volume by using a formula. Do you know the formula for finding the volume? If you do, put an X. Next, I can break apart, break apart a solid figure into rectangular prisms to find its volume. Can you do that? If you can, put an X. If you can't, leave it blank. I can multiply multi-digit whole numbers. For example, 410 times 16 equals 6,560. Do you know how to do that? If you do, put an X. And then the last one, I can divide a multi-digit whole number by, two, by a two-digit number. For example, 2,812 divided by 38 equals 74. Is that something you can do? If so, put an X. If not, leave it blank. Okay, once you have those done, go ahead and turn the page. We are going to be on page two. Okay, math vocabulary. We are going to use the words in this box to fill in the spaces below. So let's take a look here. Okay, so our first one says blank times blank equals what? Well, let's look at our words. We have dividend, divisor, factor, product, quotient, and remainder. All right, so what words relate to times tables? Hmm, I know factor and quotient relate to multiplication. Factors are the numbers that we times. So we have a factor times a factor equals the, it's not quotient, it's product, equals the product. Sorry guys, my book is moving all around. Okay, next we have a division problem. So division is quotient, dividend, and divisor. Divisor is the number we are dividing by. Dividend is the number we are dividing into. So those are our numbers that are on the left side of the equal sign. An answer for a division product is a quotient. Q-U-O-T-I-E-N-T. And sometimes when you do division, it doesn't work out evenly and you have numbers, a number left over. That is called the remainder. Okay, so now I want you to think for a minute, now as we look at these ones. This is a multiplication, this is a division. So we already did multiplication up there. So what do you think goes in those spaces? Let's think about it for a couple minutes.
Did you think it was factor? Well, you're right. So factor times a factor gives us our product. All right, let's do the next one. The next one is division. And we do the dividend first. And it's divided by the divisor. And we get our quotient. All right, let's go to the next sentence. Using the review words, complete the sentence. When you divide the blank 72 by the blank eight, the blank is nine. All right, let's think about what that is. So 72 is our big number, so it's gonna be our dividend. It's how many we have of something. by the divisor, which is how many people we're giving it to, and the quotient, how many they each get. For example, if we had 72 candy bars and we needed to give them to eight kids, how many candy bars would they each get? They'd get nine candy bars each. All right. I want you to do the bottom section by yourself. Questions one, two, three, and four. You're gonna put one of these words in each blank. And we're gonna review that in our meeting this week. So go ahead and pause the video while you do this section. All right, now that you've done that, let's look at page three. This says, dear family, because it's something you can share with your family. But we're going to read it together because it's going to help you understand what we're learning. So this week, your child is exploring volume. Volume is the amount of space inside a solid figure. A unit cube is a cube. One unit on each edge used to measure volume. Your child has already learned to find the area of a plane figure, such as a rectangle, by covering it with unit squares. Area is the number of square units needed to cover a plane. So for example, this is a plane figure. We have an index card here, right? It's flat, it's two dimensional. So when we have something like this, we're finding the unit of it. This is three inches by four inches. So the area would be 12 inches. However, when we're trying to find volume, we're trying to find out how much space is inside of an object. So the volume would be how much we can put inside of this. And we use unit cubes to figure that out. So let's finish reading this. Now your child is learning to find the volume of a solid figure, such as a cube, which was our basket by filling it with unit cubes. Volume is the number of unit cubes needed to fill a solid figure. The cube at the right has a volume of eight cubes. Let's count them. Okay, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's an eight back there that you don't see. So its volume is eight cubic units. Each unit cube in the solid figures A and B at the right has a volume of cubic one cubic unit. So they're talking about this. That is one cubic unit. To find which figure has a greater volume, you can count the unit cubes. Figure A has 25 cubic units. 
Figure B has a volume of 9 cubic units. Figure A has the greater volume than figure B because 25 is greater than 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll turn our page and we'll work on the next one. Okay, so you guys should be on page 4. All right, let's take a look here. A solid figure with six rectangular sides is called a rectangular prism. Work together to find the volume of the rectangular prisms below. Each solid figure below is a rectangular prism made of unit cubes. Each unit cube has a volume of one cubic unit. Again, when they're talking one cubic unit, that's what they're talking about. That equals what? Okay, so now we're going to look at the solid figures below. Which two figures have the same volume? What is the same about the figures and what is the difference? All right, so let's count these up. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 cubic units. Now this one is going to be a little tricky because we can't see all of them. Let me show you guys. Using cubic units. part of it. And here's the other part of it. Okay? So that's our shape. Now we can see it from the side like it's showing us there. So let's count one side. The blue side is this side right here that's visible. Okay? So let's count it. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's flip it over and count the back side. So our white side is this side back here that you can't see. Let's count it up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine on each one. So how many do we have all together? That's right, 18, good job. All right, so this one's the same. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six on the front side, and it's two deep, how many is on the back? Six. So that means this one is 12. I'll show you guys on here. So on the first side, the side that's showing, we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then on the blue side, one, two, three, four, five, six. So total, we have 12. Let's do the next one. This one's going to be kind of the same. Okay, so if there's eight on the front side, how many is going to be on the back side? It's 2D, so we're just going to go 8 and 8, which gives us 16. So our questions were said, which two figures have the same volume? If we were to put these like this, which two have the same volume? 
A and D both have 16. Are they the same shape? No, but they have the same amount of volume. That's important to remember. All right, let's go on to page five. If you didn't get all that wrote down, you can pause the video. If you have any questions, we'll review this later in our meeting. Page five. Let's look at our learning targets. A cube with side length one unit called a unit cube is said to have one cubic unit of volume and can be used to measure volume. A solid figure, which can be packed without gaps or overlaps, using n unit cubes is said to have n cubic volume. So basically what that's saying is this equals one. That was a horrible one. Equals one. And however many of those you put in here is the number of volume, is the volume number. So this one has 16. So when it says n equals n, that's saying 16 units equals 16 cubic units. Okay? Again, if you have any questions, write them down and you guys can ask me. Number two. So this one, or let's go back to one. Explain how to measure the area of a plane using the unit square. That's what we did when we drew those in. Number two, a solid figure is a three-dimensional figure. The volume of a solid figure is the amount of space inside the figure. A unit cube is a cube that has side lengths of one unit. How do you think you could use unit cubes to measure the volume of the solid figure? So how can we use this to measure the volume of this? What do we do? Let's think about it for a minute. So we could fill this with these, but remember that up in our instructions, it has to have without gaps. So you can't have spaces. So you can write down here, fill the solid figure with unit cubes to find the volume. And that's how we use the unit cubes to find the volume. Let's go to page six. Uh, okay. A rectangular prism is a solid figure with six rectangular sides or faces. The two boxes shown below are identical rectangular prisms with unit cubes inside them. Circle the diagram that you think shows the correct way to use unit cubes to measure the volume of the rectangular prism. Cross out the incorrect way. Okay, so we're going to use these to measure the volume. Which one is right? Which way are they measuring the volume correctly? Well, if we go back to our learning targets, remember it said with no gaps. So which one doesn't have any gaps? That's right, way two. Okay, let's go to number four. A unit cube is said to have one cubic unit of volume. This has one cubic unit of volume. Cubic units are, measure, are used to measure the volume of a solid figure. What is the volume of each unit cube inside the rectangular prism? So, that you circle in problem three. So what is the volume of each one of these? Oh, you guys, that looks bad. What is the volume of this? 
Do you remember? That's right, it's one. One cubic unit. That's all that that's worth is just one. So if this is each worth one, what is the volume of the rectangular prism? Let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the volume of the rectangular prism is 12 cubic units. Okay, why do you think, number five, why do you think you use cubic units instead of square units to find the volume of a solid figure? Okay, I want you guys to answer that on your own and we're gonna review it when we get into class, our class meeting. Okay, now let's look at page seven. Page seven. is a vocabulary page. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there, you guys. You're gonna do this on your own. Cubic unit, tell me what it is. It's a unit used to measure volume. What do you know about it? Tell me what you know. Give me three examples. And then you guys need to answer question two. You need to have those done for our meeting this afternoon on Monday the 24th, so that we can work on those together. You're also going to need to do page eight. Answer questions three and four. I'll erase this for you guys. On this page, answer questions three and four, and we will review them. So, for homework from session one, You need to do page six, question five, and then you need to do page seven and eight, one to four, okay? And that's the end of our first session. See you guys later.